fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. His faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I am Silver. Hi! Ma Hawkins ran the Plains Hotel in Cedar Bend, but the town itself was virtually controlled by Big Bill Carmichael, owner of the Gambling Palace and Cafe. Carmichael was never seen without his three experienced gunmen. Hey, lefty, here's your pay. Whitey, here's yours. And the breed. Thanks, boss. It looks like you two could learn some manners from the breed. Because he thanks you for the week's pay? <laughs> we earn all we get from you, boss. Well, you earned it mighty easy this week. All you three did all week was to sit around the cafe here. Yeah, be ready to gun down anyone who comes looking for you. I still say you get well paid for what you do. You haven't had to raise a hand in weeks. I've got things under my thumb now. I'm the head man in Cedar Bend. There's no one to argue the point with me. Don't forget, boss, how you got to be head man. What do you mean by that, Lefty? Our guns were mighty accurate, wiping out the opposition while you were climbing to the top. Boss, maybe the boss figures he can get along without us. Yeah. Maybe uh, we ought to shove on to someplace else, oh, huh? Forget it, Whitey. I'm not complaining. You seem to think we don't earn our pay. <laughs> uh, maybe you'll start working for your money before midnight. How's that? I'm going across the street to make a call. There's only one place across the street. That's the hotel. That's where I'm going. If you're thinking of making a call on Molly Hawkins, I can tell you right now you're wasting your time. I am, huh? You know doggone well you are, boss. I aim to marry that girl. Oh, you haven't got a chance. She's head over heels in love with young Dave Seaton. Dave Seaton? Yeah, that young whippersnapper. Molly Hawkins is too fine a girl to throw herself away on a tin horn like Seaton. Why, he's nothing but a clerk. He'll be owner of the Plains Hotel one of these days. If he marries Molly and after Ma Hawkins steps down... And what's more, boss, if you think Ma Hawkins would let you marry up with her daughter... She you... likes you the same as she likes a case of small pots. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe I can change your ideas. Change your car, Michael. Now, what's on your mind, Breed? Good. It is not much. It is only that I wish to say, Lefty and Whitey, they are right. You say you want to run the town. I agree. But when you say you want to marry Senorita Hawkins... Oh, no, no, senor. That you cannot do. I'm not asking any of you for advice. I'm just telling you what I aim to do. If I meet any opposition... Well, that's when you three start earning your money. <coughs> now follow me across the street. I'm going to have a talk with Ma Hawkins. The Lone 
Ranger and Toto were stopping at the Plains Hotel. To avoid a lot of questioning, the Lone Ranger had removed his mask and disguised his face. He sat in the window of the front room he shared with Toto on the second floor and looked out on the street. Toto, look out the window. Oh, what you see? The man had just left the cafe across the street. He's followed by three others. Ah, oh, yeah. Let me see him now. That's Big Bill Carmichael. He's a man we're here to investigate. Him plenty bad. If the stories we've heard about him are true, he practically runs this town. And if that's the case, something must be done about it. And that's right. Uh, bodyguard following him. Him come here to hotel. Hope he doesn't do anything to interfere with Ma Hawkins' plans. Well, what plans? She has an appointment with Banker Longstreet. She's trying to get him to extend her loan. <laughs> Ma Hawkins, a kindly woman of middle age, was behind the desk in the hotel lobby when Bill Carmichael came in. Oh, it's you. That's right, Ma. Were you expecting someone else? Yes, I was, Carmichael. And I just as soon you called me Mrs. Hawkins. In fact, I'd rather you didn't come here. I came to talk about something important. Well, it'll have to keep until tomorrow. I'm expecting Mr. Longstreet, the banker. Well, now, that's downright interesting. I reckon he'll just have to wait till I get through. Wait? Oh, indeed. If you look out front, you'll see my three pals at the door to make sure I'm not interrupted. Uh, you're pretty high-handed, Carmichael. <laughs> I've got a way of getting what I want, if that's what you mean. Yeah. What's on your mind? Ma Hawkins, you said a lot of things about me. Some of them were downright unkind. They'd have been a darn sight more unkind if I hadn't been raised up a lady. I don't like you, Carmichael, and I don't want you fouling up the air in my hotel. Now, have your say, you skunk, and then clear out. Ma Hawkins. I told you not to call me that. I'll make it just plain, Ma. Why, you... You see, Ma, I'm in love. You're in love with what you see reflected in your looking glass when you shave that ugly face of yours. I'm in love with Molly. Well, what's that? Your daughter. Well, of all the cussy, downright nerves. I aim to marry her. Well, I do declare. I already spoke to Molly. Well, I hope she slapped your face good and proper. She did. <laughs> But I don't mind that. I aim to ask her once again. But before I do, you'd better have a talk with her. And tell her she'll prevent no end of trouble if she marries me. Why, you... If you're threatening me... A lot could happen in a place like this, Ma. A fire, for example, might bust out most any time. Or some gents might come in and start a fight that would smash things up considerable. You're telling me those things will happen if my daughter don't agree to marry you? Well, now, after all... Oh, get out of here. Get out of this place right away or I'll, I'll swear I'll take a gun to you. Go on now, get out. Ma, what's going on? We were in the other room, Mrs. Hawkins. We couldn't help hearing you. Molly, you go back to the other room and take Dave with you. I can handle this. Good evening, Miss Molly. I'm glad to see you. I was just speaking to your mother about you. You better get out. You heard that, Carmichael. You're not wanted around this here. This is no affair of your seat, and you keep out of it. Oh, Miss Molly, I was just telling your mother a few things that could happen to this hotel. Mr. Carmichael, mother told you to leave. <laughs> get out, Carmichael. Get out, or you'll be thrown out. I'll be thrown out? Oh, who's going to do the throwing? I aim to try. Why, you, I'll show you. <laughs> you missed him. Oh, Dave, let him hand. All right, just that. Why, you. And here's another. Special ticket, Dave. Hit him again. I'll get you for that. Dave, Dave, look out. Here comes his brain. Come on, boys. Looks like the boss needs help. Step back, boss. We'll take care of this. Oh, yeah. Take care of him, boys. We appreciate right. it. Oh, Dave. Dave, look out behind you. Look out, Dave. You ornery pocket. You yellow. Dave knew he didn't have a chance against Bill Carmichael's bodyguards, but he put up a gallant fight, dodging, ducking, weaving, sidestepping. His fists worked like pistons, but he took many blows in return. He felt himself weakening when help came from an unexpected source as a tall man and an Indian raced down the stairs from the second floor. We come help fight. Where with you, Dave? Oh, Dave. Dave, these men are going to hell. You keep out of this. We're already in it. Oh, Ma, did you see that? What? Oh, no, you take the breeze. He got him. Oh. I'll teach you to keep yes. out of this. Oh. You've got Leslie, but you won't get me. Oh. Oh. Look oh. out, look out, mister. Look behind I'll you. I'll fix you. Oh. Well, so you want some more, huh, Carmichael? I'll accommodate you. Uh. 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 Phew. Gosh, I... Yeah. I guess that takes care of all four of them. How about it? Any of you want an encore? Get on your feet. You just wait. Come on, I'll help you up. No, no, let me go. Let me go. Don't hit me again. Then get out that door. 
That goes for you, too. I'm going, I'm going. You want help? No, no, I go. Oh, sakes alive, mister. I'm mighty obliged to you for helping David. We heard the commotion down here. It was four against one. Oh, Dave, are you hurt? No, I'm all right, Molly. No, we're right back where we started with Carmichael still standing there. Carmichael, I told you to clear out. Come on, Carmichael. Your move. Just remember this, all of you. I come here peaceful. It was Dave Seaton that started fighting. Whatever happens from now on, you can blame on him. This way out, Carmichael. You're going back to your own side of the street. If you know what's good for you, you'll stay there. All right, get going. Hey, let go of me. Let go of your hair. I don't need no help from you. You're getting help whether you need it or not. Come on, cut on. Close this door behind you. Uh-huh. Dave, Dave, you poor thing. Look at your face. Oh, never mind me, Molly. Look at this room. Oh. Gosh, tables and chairs busted all over the place. I... I'm sorry, Ma. I... I guess I shouldn't have started any trouble. Oh, I'm glad you did, Dave. And I'm especially glad that tall man and Injun came to help. I guess I owe plenty to them. Where are they? They left with Carmichael. Molly, this is just the beginning. Before we're through, we're going to have plenty of trouble with Carmichael. Oh, Ma, look. The banker. Oh, my goodness. Well, if it's not Mr. Longstreet. Come in, Baker Longstreet. Yeah, I am here, Dip. Uh, I'm sorry the place is in such a wreck. I've already heard about the fight in here. It was Bill Carmichael and his pal. There seems to have been considerable damage. Oh, well, nothing that can be fixed up, you know. I've, I've heard quite a bit of talk in the past few minutes. Bill Carmichael seems to have become a sworn enemy. Oh, that dirty no-account skunk. Why Mrs. He... Hawkins, I, uh, I think I can save a lot of time for both of us. Uh, there is no need to discuss any business. Uh, what? what? What do you mean, Mr. Longstreet? Mrs. Hawkins, you wanted to get an extension on money. You owe my bank. Yes, I'd like to get the mortgage on this hotel extended for a spell. Uh, you uh, have until the first of the month to pay off that mortgage. Well, I won't have the cash for the first of the month, I can tell you that. Well, I'm sorry, Mrs. Hawkins, I'm very sorry. To be perfectly frank, I was dubious about extending the loan when I came here. Now, now after learning of Carmichael's ill will toward you, well, I simply cannot take the risk of extending the mortgage. Now, see here, Mr. Longstreet, what's Carmichael got to do with it? There is already considerable damage done right here in the lobby by Carmichael. He might carry the destruction farther. Now, if I extend the mortgage, he might make this hotel quite worthless just to get even with you people. I can't take that chance. Mm. You mean to say you're afraid of what Carmichael might do to this hotel? Yeah, frankly, I am. I'm sorry, but that's the way things are. Then if it weren't for Carmichael, you'd extend the mortgage. But because of Carmichael, you've got to foreclose and take Ma's hotel away from her. That's just about it, Miss Molly. Then Bill Carmichael runs you as well as everyone else in town. <clears throat> I have no reply to that. Now, I'll bid you all good evening, and once more, let me say, <clears throat> I am sorry. Oh, well, I must say, Bill Carmichael sure picked a fine time to come here. Golly, Mom, if it hadn't been for him... Mr. Longstreet would have extended the loan. I'm sure he would have. Well, he won't extend it now. And there's nothing we can do about it, Molly. Not a thing. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. After the fight in Ma Hawkins' hotel, Dave Seaton helped restore order to the lobby, then talked at length with Molly and her mother. It was after midnight when he went to his room in the rear of the first floor. What? Masked? He uttered a gasp of surprise when he saw a masked man sitting in a chair near the open window. Close the door, David. I've been waiting for you. What? What is this? Uh, don't misjudge me because of this mask. I'm not here to rob you. But who are you? I'm here to help. To help? Help who? Longstreet wouldn't extend the mortgage, would he? No. Do you think he would change his mind if he could be sure Bill Carmichael wouldn't make trouble? Uh, he probably would, but how can anyone be sure of that? Sit down, Dave. Sit down and listen to a plan. Dave listened to the plan as outlined by the masked stranger and agreed to do his part in the faint hope of saving the hotel for Ma Hawkins and her daughter Molly. It was the following evening when Bill Carmichael and his three gunmen sat in a smoke-filled office in the rear of Carmichael's gambling hall. The boss was still complaining about the affair of the previous evening. I'll put that old woman out of business. I'll bust Dave Seaton, too. I'll... Who is it? Open up. I want to talk to Carmichael. It's Dave Seaton. Let him in. Right. Come in. Carmichael, I want to speak to you. You're on the wrong side of the street, aren't you, Seaton? You've been talking to Mary and my girl. Well? Well, just this. It's you or me. I'll be at the Red Rock in just two hours. I'll wait there for you, Carmichael. I'm going alone. And you'd better come alone. If you take these three polecat pals oh, along hey, with you, who you call well, that'll be the same as murder. And Molly will do something about that. So will the sheriff. If you're not scared, you'll come along. <laughs> scared? Who are you? I'll take you with guns, knives, or bare knuckles. I'll be waiting, Carmichael. Oh, and uh, one thing more. Before you leave here, you'd better appoint one of these three to take over as the boss. In case you don't come back. In case I don't come back? <laughs> There'll be just one of us coming back from the Red Rock, Carmichael. And I expect to be that one. Bill Carmichael and his men watching from the cafe saw Dave Seaton ride out of town toward the south. A little later, Carmichael left town and headed in the same direction. He knew his strength and was confident of his ability to dispose of the smaller man with little difficulty. A mile from town, the trail led through a clump of cottonwoods. Suddenly, the road was blocked by a tall man on a white horse. Oh, 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 oh. In the moonlight, Carmichael saw that the other man was masked and that he held a gun in readiness. Hey, what's this mean? Hold it, Carmichael. I'll go for a gun. Who are you? What do you want here? Rope him, Toto. Come, 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 fella. Come, Easy, Silver. Uh, get him. Here. You, Redskin. I saw you before. That's right. Take that rope off. Let me go. I'll help you, Toto. Stop your struggling, Carmichael, or I'll wrap you on the head. This is a double crossing uh, trick. This isn't fair. It's two to one. Dave Seaton tricked me. That's what he did. Wasn't Dave's idea. I was going to meet him fair and square. Fair and square? What's fair about meeting a man 30 pounds lighter than yourself? What are you going to do with me? Tie you up and take you to camp. Where Tonno can keep an eye on you. Word of the fight spread through the town and became the subject of everyone's conversation. Did you hear the news? Dave's got no chance. Carmichael will kill that kid. Too bad about Dave. He's outweighed 50 pounds or so. Well, at least he's got nerve. No one thought of going to bed that night. The street was full of people who were gripped by increasing tension. It was time for one or the other of the duelists to return. The biggest crowd had gathered in front of Carmichael's gambling palace and cafe. Finally, a horseman rode in, shouting. He's coming! He's coming! Hey, 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 hey. I've just seen him. He's riding into town. The fight's over. How does Carmichael look? Does he look beat up some? No. No, it's Dave Seaton huh? coming back. Hey, Dave Seaton? I can't believe it. There he comes. See him? Great day. Boys, I don't like this. Hey, what's happened? Tell us about it, Dave. <laughs> hold on, hold on, fellas. Dave, Dave, thank goodness you're all right. Sure I am, Molly. Ma, why, he's all right. He isn't even hurt. Oh, great work, Dave, great work. Let me through here. Let me through. Dave, let the sheriff through. Now Dave's in for it. Let him get to Dave. I heard about the fight. I was waiting to put Carmichael under arrest for murder. 
Now it looks like it's the other way around. Oh, but Sheriff, come now, on. You're under arrest. But Sheriff, you can't arrest me without finding a body. I'll find it all right. It won't be far from Red Rock. But you have no proof that I killed Carmichael. I know your fight was a fight to the finish. Now come along. I'm holding you in jail while I go look for Carmichael. Three killers, the bodyguards of Boss Bill Carmichael, sat in the office of the cafe. All three were dazed, stunned by the sudden turn of events. Dave licked him. Dave got him. I don't know how he did it. Yeah, but he got him. That's what counts. And if he's hid the body, he'll maybe get away with it. Well, senors. What's eating you, Breed? Well, now that senior Carmichael is gone, we must have a new boss. I am it. Does anyone care to argue? Yeah, I do. Let's go! Doggone, Lefty. What'd you hit him with? My fist. Must have busted his jaw. Now pick him up, Whitey. Take him over to the docks to be patched up. Tell the bartender to come pick up the pieces of that chair. Now hold on, Lefty. Who said you was the one to give orders? You hit him, pick him up yourself. What are you talking about? I'm next in charge after Bill Carmichael. Who says so? I've been with him the longest. What's more, you've seen what i just done to breathe. That don't make you boss. If it's fists, that make the boss. But try mine. <laughs> Boy, you, I'll show Come you. Come on and try it. I've been wanting to paste you for a long time. <laughs> While Lefty and Whitey fought with naked fists, Reed recovered consciousness, sat up, studied the situation, and got to his feet. I'll fix you both. I'll show you who's boss. I'll run for these and take this. The office had been made nearly soundproof. Moreover, customers in the cafe beyond the door were used to minding their own affairs, and those who heard the fight ignored it. The three-cornered battle was at its peak when there was a crash of glass. All three of the fighters turned toward the window. That man, he's mad. Which one of you is boss to take the place of Carmichael? Me, Me. I am. And why you ought to know? Who are you anyway? I want to make a deal, a big deal, for the man who's going to run things in Carmichael's place. Well, you can talk to me. Not fun. I'll do the talking. Neither one of you are the boss. You keep out of this breed. Remember what I gave you a few minutes ago? Oh, I have not forgotten. Now I pay you back. Boy, you take that. And I got the same for you, Whitey. We'll find out who's boss. Oh, yeah? Oh. The Lone Ranger moved away from the window with a smile as he saw the fight well underway. The men were like a pack of wolves fighting among themselves for the undisputed leadership. Lefty finally triumphed. Though bruised and battered, he was able to order men to carry Whitey and Breed out of the office and take them to the doctor for repairs. Then he sat beside Carmichael's big desk in the only chair that had remained unbroken. He was smoking one of Carmichael's cigars when the door opened. Dave Seaton, what are you doing here? I didn't come along. Dave is here to speak for me as manager of my hotel. The sheriff put you in jail. I'm out. That's right, Lefty. I was mistaken about Seaton. Uh, where's the boss? You're looking at him, Seaton. I've taken things over in Carmichael. <laughs> You've taken things over. I wonder what uh, Bill Carmichael will say to that. Well, what do you mean? Did did you think Carmichael had been killed? Why, I... Uh... You're wrong, Lefty. Carmichael's coming here on foot, and he's vowing to get even with the masked men who captured him. He'll be looking for his guns. Huh? <laughs> oh. I expect he'll be like a wounded bear when he sees... You put a couple of them out of commission. <laughs> you wait till he sees his smashed up office and you sitting at his desk smoking his cigars. <laughs> I'm going to show this son a few things. Whitey, Lefty, where are you? Uh-oh. You just tell him that you took over, Lefty, because you thought I'd licked him. You, see, you and Ma, what are you doing here in my place? What's this I hear about a fight that... Well, I'm all... You lefty. Get yourself a new man, Carmichael. I quit. Come back here. <laughs> it looks like that busted window was real convenient for him, eh, Carmichael? What's the meaning of this? Sheriff, who smashed up this office? <laughs> well, the boys thought you were licked, Carmichael. They had a little disagreement, deciding who would be the boss in your place. <laughs> Whitey and Breed are going to be laid up for some time. <laughs> and left is just cleared out. Carmichael, <laughs> it looks like you'll have to stand up on your own feet without three guns licks to back you up. Now, see here, Sheriff. <laughs> Carmichael, you're going to miss those three. I'm serving you with a bill of complaint. It was the following morning when Longstreet the banker came into the lobby of the Plains Hotel. He glanced at the back of a man who was repairing furniture, 
Then turn to Ma Hawkins, who sat behind the desk. Good morning, Miss Hawkins. Oh, Banker Longstreet, I didn't expect to see you here. I've again. just been talking to the sheriff and learned that law and order was about to prevail in our community once again in uh-huh. place of gun rule. <laughs> I guess that's right. If that's true, Mrs. Hawkins, if it is true that the power of Boss Carmichael has been completely broken, and if I may be certain that this hotel will not be wrecked beyond repair, I, uh, well, I would be willing to extend your loan. Oh, great day. That's the best news I've heard in a long yeah. time. I see you have a carpenter making repairs. Oh, we sure have. Now, if I could only be sure that Carmichael is Without through, his gunslingers, he'll be easy to manage. Uh, I uh, wonder. You wonder, eh? <laughs> you look over yonder. See that critter swinging the hammer? Uh, uh, I see his back. You! When you get done putting that chair together, go out back and get the mop and swamp this floor. Why, oh, you all... Yes, I'm yes. <laughs> Well, that, that's Carmichael. Oh, you're doggone right it is. The sheriff took him before the judge last night, yes. and the judge handed down a special ruling. Yes. Carmichael is to work for me until he's made good the damage he did. <laughs> 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 Yeah, more well, that does it. <laughs> Your loan is extended, and if you want more money, just, just let me know. <laughs> well, uh, the masked man figured you'd act this way. Uh, masked man? Yep. The man who planned for Carmichael to lose his gunman. The Lone Ranger. This is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle and directed by Charles D. Livingston. Tonight's story was written by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. (laughs) 